Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the development of the spleen. We'll be looking at the embryology of the spleen. How the spleen came about. We all know what the spleen do in the body, or rather what it does in the body. It is a lymphatic organ. So how this organ came about during the fetal life is what we are going to be looking at. So, the development of the spleen starts at the sixth week of the fetal life. That is when it starts. But looking at this now, before we come to the development, looking at this, you understand this structure here. You see, this is the four gods. The four gods, like I told us in our earlier video, gave rise to the esophagus. You can see, it gave rise to the trachea, the long god, even the stomach. That is what the four gods gave rise to, and the first and second part of the duodenum. Then coming to the mid gods, you see the mid gods here, so that you understand this structure here. Then this is the dosal mesogastrium here, lying on the dosal aspects of the four gods, and this is the ventral mesogastrium, lying at the ventral aspect of the four gods. So, having understand or having understood this diagram, let's begin with the development of the spleen. So, like I told us earlier, the spleen begins to develop at the sixth week. So, what happened? At the sixth week, you notice at this dosal mesogastrium, some mesenchymal cells in the dosal mesogastrium begin to proliferate. So, they begin to multiply, and as they multiply, they begin to come together. So they multiply or proliferate and they come together to form a mass. So these are mesenchymal cells that are surrounding the dosal mesogastrium. And you can see how these mesenchymal cells are coming together to form a mass. So that is it. As this mass is coming together, remember that the dosal mesogastrium is divided into two. It is divided into two. When we did the video, or the teaching on the stomach, development of the stomach. I told us that the dosal mesogastrium is divided into two. So as you can see here, you can see this dividing the dosal mesogastrium into two. So this part of the dosal mesogastrium lie closer to the stomach, developing stomach. Why this part lie closer to the abdominal wall? So this divides the dosal mesogastrium into two. You can see that this one lies closer to the stomach. Why this one lies closer to the posterior abdominal wall? So this one that lies closer to the stomach gave rise to the gastrosplenic ligament. It gave rise to the gastrosplenic ligament. Why this dosal mesogastrium that lies closer to the posterior abdominal wall gave rise to the renal ligament? So, you notice that as this mass is coming together, they form a mass here, they form a nodule. As this mass of mesenchymal cells are coming together, they form a nodule, as you can see here. By then, this has given rise to the gastrosplenic ligament, and this has been transformed into the linorenal ligament. So, if you notice what happened here, after the orientation of the stomach, you know that the stomach begins to form as a single tube, but in, after the orientation of the stomach in its proper shape, you notice that the gastrosplenic ligament comes to separate the stomach from the spleen. So the gastrosplenic ligament is found around here, separating the spleen from the stomach. Why the binodenal ligament is found somewhere here? Somewhere here, attaching the spleen to the kidney. So, what I'm about to say, or what I'm trying to say here, is that as this gives rise to the, as this part of the dosal mesogastrum gives rise to the uh, gastrosplenic ligament, this part gives rise to the binodenal ligament. And with that, this mass that has been transformed into a nodule moved to the left. It moved to the left. 
and it comes to lie just below the uh, greater curvature of the stomach at the level of the uh, ninth to eleventh rib. That is where it comes to lie. And this part of the basal mesodastrum gave rise to the gastroesophageal ligament. Why this part gave rise to the duodenal ligament? And you know that the this attaches the spleen to the kidney. So that is what happened in the development of the spleen. Then coming to the anomalies of the spleen or the congenital anomalies of the spleen, we have accessory spleen. This is a situation where more than one spleen develop, and some of these small masses of accessory spleen can be found in the it can be found in the splenic artery, it can be found in the gastrosplenic ligament, it can be found around the duodenal ligament, it can be found around the pancreas. So that is it for the accessory spleen. Then we also have the lobulation of the spleen. This is a situation where the spleen forms as a single mass, as a single load of tissue. But in this situation, it is lobulated just like the liver. Is lobulated. It is lobulated. It is divided into nodes, different nodes. So that is what lobulation of the spleen means, and it is a congenital anomaly. Then the third one is in a situation where the spleen will be located at the right side of the abdomen, and also the pancreas will be located at the left side of the abdomen. In that situation, it is known as situs impactus. So the spleen, instead of being on the left side of the on the left side of the abdomen, is found at the right side. And the pancreas, instead of being at the right side, change rotation to the left side of the abdomen. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, learn the system great, like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.